Yo. What's up? What's up, Holocult? Cult? It's Wednesday. You know what that means. We are back with the night shift, halfway through the work week. We got Miss Maeve over here, our production manager, sitting in, making sure we're doing shit right. Yeah, somebody's got to do it. Because we sure as hell don't. I'm not entirely sure what we got going on here, but... (laughs) (laughs) He's making it work. Uh, How is everybody this evening? I hope everybody's good. Just kicking it. You're the only one that can do the balloons. (laughs) There you go. Maybe's trying to work some some YouTube magic here. Yeah, she's good at magic. She's good at bossing. Unlike the unlike the rest she's of good us. Good at bossing. Man, that ain't no lie. Daddy. Yeah, Gage had basketball practice, and usually she's a handful at practice. So I figured I'd let Mama go watch Gage with a uh, without having. Many inter- many, inter- many in- interruptions. I don't believe she's a handful. <laughs> eh, you're usually good, but sometimes you're a handful. You say hi to everybody. <laughs> oh man! You know, uh, to start out the evening, I want to do a little shout out here. Shout out to uh-huh. our uh, homie Adam from Pennsylvania. Who hooked us up with a legit Schuylkill note here? It is awesome. It's pretty, pretty dope. So yeah, we got that in the mail. I just I got it yesterday, but I only get the mail like twice a week. So that is dope. We appreciate you, Adam. Putting boots on the ground, going out there and getting some hollow evidence. Yeah, it's definitely much appreciated. It was awesome. Anybody else out there that finds someone to send them our way, you know the drill. You know the drill. So, yeah, those are definitely getting framed and hung up on the wall. Pretty excited. Let me see. I had some. I thought I saved some stuff. I think it's, I think it's awesome that somebody was able to find one now. Send it yeah, over. he wrote a little apology note. He was like, sorry, it took so long. They were harder to find than I thought. I'm like, the fact that you actually f- went out and looked. Yeah, and you yeah. actually found one. Is pretty red. <laughs> what kind of weird stuff we got going on in the world, in our world today? There, chat. There plenty of stuff. I did, I did see they've, uh, I shared a little video on the TikTok of a new robot they put out. I know we were talking about robots last week, but this one is like a little dog, but it's got a giant flamethrower on its head. <laughs> and it just of runs around it does. and sets everything on fire. Because the only thing... It seems it seems necessary. The only thing safer than a robot is a dog robot, and the only thing safer than a dog robot is a dog robot with a flamethrower face. I love that it has a yeah. flamethrower face. Why do we do the things that we do as humans? Uh, we're inquisitive. We are something. <laughs> <laughs> There's many words for inquisitive, but that's the one that I will choose. I had something else saved, but now I can't find out how to get to it on my phone. Well, that doesn't work very well. That's exactly it. It's a twisted metal dog robot. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah, well, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much 100%. That means technically you could just call him Thumper. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure Thumper had the flamethrowers. I remember I all the way back even, then. I don't even remember. 
that far back. I wish I did. Mm. Oh, here it is. Let's go. Stumbled across this little news article that I thought we'd all talk about because it's pretty fun. Yeah. I'm excited. Vampire Bigfoot, quote, drank blood of animals found dead in the woods as warning. Documentary filmmaker claims. <laughs> now, okay. now the flamethrower robot dogs are starting to make a little more sense to combat the vampire Bigfoots. Uh-huh. Oh. Yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah, it, your, your question earlier yes. just got answered. You have to take this with a grain of salt because it comes from our friends at the Daily Star. Senior news reporter Ethan Blackshaw says, Warning, graphic content. A documentary maker reckons Bigfoot might be snapping animals' necks and drinking their blood following a mysterious deaths of a deer, a buzzard, and some dogs. Documentary maker believes Bigfoot murdered the animals, drank their blood, and left their corpses in the woods as a warning. Kelly Lockman is the man behind the I Believe in Bigfoot YouTube channel, where he recently shared the first part of a Bigfoot investigation documentary. Whilst filming, he came across a dead buzzard, a dead deer in the woods of North Carolina. Both animals had their necks snapped backwards and twisted, but there was no blood at the scene. Okay, regardless, that's weird. The fact that they ended up that way. Yeah. If it is a hoaxumentary, the fact that he went through that much gratuitous violence... To make it that way is almost you know, more disturbing than it being a vampire Bigfoot. I don't, I like movies. I don't like uh, movies with voiceovers. You know what I'm talking about? They're originally in a different language and then they put our language over top of it and yeah. doesn't match at all. Those make me mad. Like, pretty mad. But what makes me even more mad are mockumentaries. Those make me extremely mad. Yeah. They should be banned. Which I don't know if this is that. But as with anything, I don't think I've ever I don't think I've ever heard of a Bigfoot drinking thing things of their like draining and drinking blood. No. No, we have heard of mutilated animals as like warnings, though, especially like down around the Ozarks and stuff. I know what YouTube was it? Sasquatch Theory had that um, whole documentary on the killing fields is what they called it down there, where whenever the old farmer would do something that they didn't like, they would just go through and they would just annihilate his deer population and just leave them scattered. But I thought... Yeah, that makes subtle sense. I mean, it seems a little unnecessary if you were to ask me, but I'm not a Bigfoot claiming territory either. So, And there are other cryptids that are reported to drink blood, so maybe it's just different strokes for different Bigfoots. I guess you can add Bigfoot to the list. The article goes on, although images of the corpses are blurred in the documentary, Kelly shared them in full on the Bigfoot subreddit as a teaser for it. Replying to one comment, he explained, I think this one was trying to warn us. There was no blood. I've recorded witness testimony describing a very similar scene. It may be that they just drink the blood. In another message or another comment, he said, this was definitely a message sent to us from the creatures. So I guess, oh yeah, there's the pictures. So that is, uh, the deer is not too a valid, a valid point. Yeah, there. the deer is. I mean, the neck is bent backward. The weird thing is, the elites drink blood. Why wouldn't Bigfoot? That's true. Maybe the Bigfoot are the elite. I almost said that. Let's I was going to so. say. I mean, there's humans that drink blood, so that's not that far fetched. But they're found right next to one another. Like the buzzards here and the deers right here. Oh, that, yeah, that's, that's definitely weird. I thought. 
I got my mic all screwed up, so I apologize. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was weird. I saw that and thought it was interesting. Uh, let me find the name of the YouTube channel again. If anybody wants to go check it out, feel free to do so. It is the I Believe in Bigfoot YouTube channel. So either that's going to drop or has already dropped. I might check it out just to uh, see the, hear the witness testimony because that's that's interesting. I'm with it. Described a puncture wound on the dogs as if something had drank their blood. They were drained. I don't. Maybe it's a chupacabra foot. Yeah. I like it. I like it. I'd like to know how that got created. Probably an interesting story. But I like it. Yeah. I saw it. And all I seen was the headline. I'm like, okay. We're going to need some vampire Bigfoot in the night shift this evening. I feel For those that. of you hanging out with us, we're about 15 minutes in. So if you want to, you can hit the like button, subscribe button, and the notification bell. That way, people can find us. Unless we are shadow banned, and then you can't find us. Because we... Well, and then we're just part of the foot clan. See, in my brain, I think that maybe we are silenced a little bit, right? Because we have people that set up for the notifications and they don't get them and this, that, and the other. But then I'm like, for me and Kyle to be shadow banned and still get as many people that complain about the show, I don't think those two go hand in hand. Well, it could. It could. Because it could be, I mean, run with me here. It could be an elaborate Where we conspiracy. only go to the people that don't like us. Or we got in trouble. And then they shadow banned us. And they also sent hate bots our way to make us quit. That way, we're not a thorn in their side. Yeah. Because we don't generate, we don't generate much money for them. It's it, apparently it's across the board. We're more or less more notification bells busted. Uh, Spotify is definitely sus. Somebody else, somebody else told me that they're uh, who was it? Who Spotify is all screwed up? Uh, Paranormal Roundtable. I know Wolf. Uh, they his listeners are having a hell of a time. Like they're only getting shows in like huge blocks, so they'll go a whole like two or three months without a show releasing, then they'll all release at once and. I don't use Spotify, but our Spotify, uh, it doesn't do it like per numbers. It doesn't do very good. It does about a, about a third of what Apple does. Yeah. They used to be neck and neck too. So yeah, I'm pretty sure that the powers that be probably, only sending angry people. That'd be a fair guess. Somebody posted on YouTube. It's like, how did a Saturnian mage find your podcast with only 3000 subscribers to buy the book? And I was like, you found it. So it must not be that difficult. Douche. Or you could be like, yeah, I know it's weird. It's even weirder that there, there's not that many subscribers. That means more. Uh, divine intervention, if you look at all of it, people like I've subscribed now, not subscribed. Hell yeah, (laughs) yeah, it is what it is. You're we're gonna fight this for a long time, so it's fine. It is what it is. Aren't dumb enough Uh, to shut up, smart enough to shut up. Also, correct. Anybody watch the Tucker Carlson on Rogan by chance? I'm sure a couple of you in the chat did. Very interesting. Very interesting. I feel like Tucker's taking up a new mantle of Alex Jones at this point. He's going going down the old Alex road, huh? <clears throat> He's going hard in the paint. It was a good episode. Very interesting conversation. Uh, like right out of the rip, they they get into UFOs and stuff like that. 
Appreciate you. Uh, I was actually surprised at how well the Black Cube episodes have done. By, by, uh, by all means. Yeah, they hit. They hit hard. The first yeah. one was one of our best. Well, not better than I the thought. first uh, release was one of our best monthly releases ever. It really ran. Yeah, it was good. But yeah, the Tucker Carlson and Rogan conversation is definitely worth checking out. Uh, it's interesting to hear someone of both their standards like have that conversation. It's very interesting. Because like Tucker, yeah, like it, he wouldn't expect a guy like that to have that type of uh, conviction on the topics. Like you know, claiming that Alex Jones is being channeled by something. That's how he gets a lot of his information. And like, and he says it's so matter of fact, which is just, it's just interesting, bizarre, and awesome to hear. It was just, it was really interesting. Oh, I haven't, I haven't listened to that one yet, Twiz, with the macroaggressions. I haven't actually listened to that in a while. Yeah, I didn't need... Kyle had mentioned it to me yesterday, and I did not get a chance to listen to it yet. That's good. I did have a uh, listener propose a question about Rogan. And I apologize, I'm starting to get sick, but uh, he asked, do you think it's possible Rogan made a deal because he always talks about the demon that's inside him and he has to feed it by grinding and going and going and going. And I was like, regardless, I'm going to say no. But mostly because I don't want that to be true. Because I do... Uh... I do appreciate him so much that I would never, I would never want that to be true. The demon was probably Spotify. <laughs> he made a deal with them, Twiz. Ain't no doubt. Ain't no doubt. And respectfully so, Mr. Rogan. Uh, yeah, the, the question was a deal with his soul, of course. I don't think it's true. I think Rogan is a straight hustler. Um, and he just had a long path of moving forward. And it was just a theoret theoretical question. It wasn't like this big serious uh deal. But I was like, no, no, I don't I don't think so. But at the end of the day, would it surprise you if they came out to be the opposite? Not really. I'm saying we get him on, just ask him straight up. You being literal? I mean are you being down for that. subjective? Or whatever the opposite of literal is. Because we need to know. Yeah, Twiz, because he made a deal with a demon. Spotify? Spotify is the demon? It silenced us. Hey, I'm not arguing. I'm just trying to get my facts straight. He definitely he did get up. paid. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just saying, if Spotify were to propose us a deal. Oh, for that, for that amount, of course. <laughs> but not out there. Of course. Um, I saw something here. Uh, Mr. Getho says, I can't remember which podcast it was, but I remember thinking, oh, wow, that might get them in trouble. And then it never gave me any more notifications since, and that was weeks ago. Probably the one we got dinged on. No, no. I don't think it, I don't think you would have seen that ding mm. coming because it was so nonchalant. It was it was 100 percent taken out yeah, of context. I was even making a joke, but whatever. YouTube doesn't yeah. have a sense of humor. They're probably th they're probably talking about the 
Confessions of the Epstein Driver. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's good to see Maynard in here. Hope you're doing better, bud. I just saw you in oh, the for chat. Sure. We've all been pulling for you, sending good vibes your way, my man. <laughs> Kyle's, your poster back there is the highlight of the chat. Yeah. Yeah, my, uh, my oldest sister got that for me. She lives out in Arizona and she actually, she actually sent that and a sticker. And then she's, she's the one that hooked me up with the, uh, the Bud Light oh, alien yeah, that can. Was dope. Right. Up, that's right up right there. The wall too. Uh, there we go. That's pretty, pretty dope. I saw something I need to try to find here. Uh, something semi close to home coming up for us is uh, July 13th, 2024 at Missouri State Penitentiary. Doing time with the dead at Missouri State Pen. For 99 bucks, you can go and get a walk through ghost hunt at Missouri State Penitentiary. It includes access housing to Unit 4, uh, the dungeon, general population, death row. Uh, the uh, unit called 3D, the women's unit in the gas chamber. You can go and do your own little investigation. I know a guy at work, Pat, goes quite often. He brought me back a cool little ink pen souvenir, so that's dope. Hang on, I'll be right back. I think Maeve locked my <laughs> wife out of the house, so I'm going to go Copy that. <laughs> but yeah, anyone close, Missouri, Illinois, anywhere around there, I might have to see what our schedule's doing because I've been wanting to go do it. Uh, event begins at 8 o'clock and gets over at 4 a.m. So that would be kind of cool to do. But just for anybody interested, I thought I'd throw it out there. It's pretty, pretty neat. What else? Man, the chat's going like crazy. We will not sell out to Spotify unless, again, they offer us some Rogan money because Spotify doesn't do that good for us. Do better, Spotify, and then we'll do better for you. Let's see the haircut. I've had my haircut for a long time. There ain't nothing left. I'm getting a cut again this Saturday, even shorter, because now it's getting hot and sweaty at work. So, oh, it's been months. I just keep it tucked under the Wayne's World hat. Well, not Wayne's World. He is legend hat, but. Yeah. Uh, All right, I'm Maynard back. just invited us to Arizona. When he gets a feeling better, he's going to take us to the Travis Walton abduction site, which I'm down for. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. Uh, what else? Oh, I did watch a pretty dope documentary. Uh. I was just, I was going to bring that up before I had to go let everybody yeah, in. Yeah, pretty dope documentary called uh, The Haunting Lodge. It's on Prime and starts out as, uh, man, I can't remember the guy's name who, who made the documentary, but he used to work for, for uh, Ghost Hunters, kind of broke off, did his own thing. Uh, did some documentaries with Steve Gonzalez, but this one's kind of just him and his wife produced the whole thing. It's very well done. But there is a hunting lodge in southern Georgia that has a history of um, just kind of, in the beginning, it's kind of like normal hauntings. The hunters will stay in the lodge and they'll hear the doors close and things walking through um, the hallways of the old home and stuff like that. But as they start to get more and more accounts, it kind of evolves from like a residual kind of thing to a more intelligent sort of encounter. And then it just goes off the rails. Um, they start recording these, they get in touch with this psychic who says that, um, there are multiple things going on on the property. It's not the house. It's more the property. There is like a residual family living there. 
Uh, one of them is more on the intelligent haunting side, but they're kind of more protecting the people of the house from whatever else is going on. But she, before she'd ever made it to the home, uh, she was having visions. She drew the home almost to a T. Uh, she kept drawing the hallway and like this, this light coming out of the hallway, it almost looked like an abduction scenario. So she comes, they get her out to the house and they're talking about it. And then all of a sudden, like all this shit starts going on. They're recording these weird lights that are coming out of the forest and they're It's all kinds of weirdness, right? She's talking about the intelligent, uh, encounter, whatever it is being ancient, being not of this earth alien and, she said it's tied to Brown Mountain in the Carolinas and all this stuff. It's it's cool. Kind of leaves you uh, with more questions than answers. But, I mean, that's what you get when you're dealing with the paranormal. Yeah, well, they all, yeah, yeah. all kind of do at the end of it. Yeah. But it was cool. It's worth it. It's, it's only like 68 minutes long. It's not very long. It's It's weird. It's weird, especially seeing the lights like come out of the woods and interact with them. Just these weird flashes of the light and whoever the main guy is is standing out there. And these things are like, like right around them. It's right around them. It's, it's weird. Was the, was the flashes of light halfway similar to, um, sir, no face. Um, It's hard to tell. They were giving off their own uh, their own light essentially because they had this they had this camera. I forget what the name of it, like an ED something camera. I can't remember, but it was recording them. And their other cameraman who was filming with the regular camera was just watching eyes on, and he saw he would see them just from his eyes. So they were they had their own illumination out there. They just were like most of them were little little orbs essentially and the psychic who was with them called it before they ever came she's like we need to go out here we need to face this direction she's like they're they're getting ready to like make contact with us and then all of a sudden you start seeing them up in the sky doom 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 and then they're in the woods and it's yeah they're in the woods and she's like they're gonna come closer and they start getting closer you see them move through the field she's like i don't want to alarm you guys but they're going to kind of surround us. <laughs> and I'm like, at that point, I'd be like, hell no, they're not. Oh, <laughs> does she, does, did anybody ask the question? Like, what do they want? Uh, yes, yeah, she was trying to figure it out, but she said it had something to do with hunting and taking of like lives on the property, like meaning animal lives, I'm assuming. And they just they they weren't about that life, I guess. Oh shit! So they was mad yeah, at the she, hunters, and it was almost it almost felt like it was tied to like uh, indigenous people, Native American lore, because she said she watched them like she was she visualized it like on this map, and they were bouncing from uh, like Native American mound to mound as they were moving, and they stopped on Brown Mountain which you have the Brown mountain lights and hell you're talked about it. And it's a pretty big paranormal hotspot. She said something ties, whatever this phenomena is to Brown mountain. And she says, I don't know if it's using the energy from the burial mounds to essentially, I don't, I don't know, maybe move or recharge their batteries or how it goes, but it's, it was, it was worth the watch. At first I thought it was like, at first I thought it was a, uh, uh, fake documentary because it it calls itself a film so i'm like all right a film's a movie but a a documentary is also a film right and then i got to looking into it and looking up on looking it up on uh the internet and stuff and it's all uh unscripted 100 percent legit done by uh the dude and his wife and their little like two three man camera crew they get the footstep like the footsteps you can hear them walking around it's it's weird it's definitely worth it well, a definitely. Book I thought about it. Right. I looked it up because they they you never mentioned. I don't. I don't know if they ever mentioned the exact name of the place, 
but it's easy to find if you pay attention to the uh, episode. And then also, I wonder if it'd be worth trying to talk to the psychic that they had. Oh, yeah, I, I was looking her up too, and she's have a conversation with her. What is it called again? It's the Haunting Lodge, and it's on. I think I watched it on Prime. Again, it's not very long. I think it's 68 minutes, but the fact the psychic even drew, she said there were two outside of the the regular like ghosts, essentially um, human spirits. She drew the other two entities that were coming onto the property, the essentially the aggressive ones. And one looked as crazy as batshit crazy as it sounds. One looked like a dog man. It was tall, had a had a canine, caned face at about seven or eight feet tall, and the other ones were small, and it looked like a gray alien. And those were the it's, aggressive ones. Those were the ones God. that weren't that were not excited. The hunters were on the property, and the way she talked about it was like the the uh, spirit of the old man that lived there was trying to like warn the hunters that were there when these things were coming in. So the doors would slam. There'd be knocks on the doors. Like he was almost trying to scare him out of there before whatever these things were would get there. That gives me goosebumps. There, it kind of reminds me of John Edmonds. Yeah. And Star, like to a degree. She said a one liner that stuck with me. I wish I would have wrote it down. I thought I might have posted it on the Discord. But she's like, you have to remember not every spirit you get in contact with is a human spirit. I was like, oh, yeah, that's my gross. <laughs> it's, it's also interesting that at least by perception, the gray and the dog man entities were unhappy about the hunting. Yeah, it's, I, I don't know. I'm going to have to watch it again because it, she kind of goes off on these different tangents because she's getting she's getting different things and she's sitting there and she she sat down and when they were essentially she they started hearing them like walk around outside on this because of this this hunting lodge has a big wooden wraparound porch and you can hear something huge walking around outside, like just thumping around. And she's like, maybe I'll try to draw them. Maybe I'll try to draw them and figure out what they are. And then she drew these two things because she drew herself. She said she kept seeing herself in the hallway. And when she went in, she's like, this is the hallway. And had a door at the other end. She's like, and the door would kick open and there would just be this huge bright light. Just like engulf her in light. And she, she had drawn it before she ever been to the house. And she drew the house. Like it had the huge wraparound front porch. And it's got these pillars that connect it and shit. I, if you watch it again, you ought to try to find her. See if we can't get her on the show. Find her name, because she's listed in the uh, credits. I'm pretty sure. Because I, I feel like that would be a pretty interesting conversation. Yeah. I was just because I was just thumbing through Prime, and uh, saw that. Let me see who the cast is here. Okay, the directors and the ones who are the main the main two people in it are a uh, couple, Kendall and Vera Welpton. And then I want to think, let me double check here. The um, psychic in it is a woman by the name of Jill Morris. And she had worked with... Uh, the team before on the Steve Gonzalez documentary. So when she started having these visions, I think is what kind of put them onto this lodge. And it's somewhere down in Southern Georgia. It is a little bit of a drive yeah. for us. Been out there once. It's a long drive. But worth it. We have to fight if... an alien dog man. Yeah, I'm down. Does ghost hunting count as hunting? Because, I mean, Probably. yeah, it did it with, for them. They had a lot of... I have to invest heavy in throwing stars. Yeah, ninja swords. 
Yeah. Do an episode on Emanuel Swedenborg. Never heard of him. That I know of. Reminds me of Universal Soldier for some reason. Probably just because of the Borg. Pretty fair yeah. assessment, I'd say. Cyborg, Universal Soldier Borg, Emanuel Swedenborg. Yes. Yeah, Got to get my right? ghost hunting license. Please don't give the government any ideas. No <laughs> doubt. That's kind of the weirdness that I saw. I know there was a lot of UFO talk on Twitter, but I didn't really follow it all that much this week. Again, we're... A lot of that might have been spurred by the the Tucker stuff. So, Training a bunch of new guys at work, so it has been busy. That's fun. Yeah, I got to do... Crazy shit tomorrow, so that'll be Thursdays fun. are always the worst day for me as well. It'll be a rough one for myself. Do a big nasty tree. Another day in the life. Emanuel Swedenborg. Let me write that down. We'll take a little, little gander. A little gander. A little gander. Uh, no, yeah, go. Everything's so laggy lately. Yeah, mine too, especially on uh, Chrome. My Chrome has been working like trash. So laggy. The lines are open. I'm just going to leave them open. You want to call, call. If not, me and Steve just keep talking. Yeah. Some people like us to open them. Some people don't care. It's fine. Yeah, I'm just going to open it up. Whatever you got. We're here yeah. For oh, it. my schedule change is May twelfth. May twelfth, I go back to midnights, which is gonna offset the night shift in some way. We got a call. Hey, welcome to the night Yo. shift. What's going on? Hey guys, what's, what's up? True. What's up? That's awesome. <laughs> Now that I'm through, I don't know what to talk about. <laughs> Line is you yours. Want. The world is your oyster. Excellent. Excellent. Hey, um, what did I want to tell you Something guys? Something creepy. Yeah, I, never mind. I, I, nope, yeah, no no pressure. Um, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> there's, no, there's no dumb questions or, or comments here. Um. Yeah, um, about your Saturn stuff. Yeah? Yeah, I've really been um, interested in that. Um, and there's been a lot of coincidences around it since you guys started talking about it um, that I've noticed. Like what? Uh, do around tell, here do anyway. tell. Uh, well, you know, over the past year or so, I have been... Um, inspired to start making things out of um, a particular type of wood. Um, Holly actually is the type of wood. And apparently that is um, Saturn's favorite wood. Hmm. Interesting. And the items that I want to make for it, of course, are uh, mystical in uh, nature. And I didn't realize that at a time, but that might explain why I want to do it. That maybe I'm being influenced in some fashion. Maybe Holly's an interesting choice to use for wood. Um, yeah, if you've not worked with it, it's kind of um, it's kind of hard. Like it's kind of hard on your tools, right? Uh, you know, like you, you if you if you uh, com- well, you're a tree guy, so you know you know stuff about wood. But um, if you compare it to say like um, poplar and oak, it's kind of like in between those two. Yeah as far as hardness goes, you know, when you're trying to work with it after it's been dried and tool tooled. But, um, yeah. So. That's interesting. Yeah. Holly's used for, like someone said in the, the chat there, it's what magic wands were made of. Yeah. Some of them. A, yeah. Depending on what, uh, and hazelnut is also, uh, 
you know, Hazelwood, but that's kind of, at least around where I am, that's hard to come by even more so than Holly is. Right. We don't, we don't have very many hazel trees around here or bushes, but interesting. Anyway. Yeah. You're not the only uh, one with oddities like that. What's that? I said, you haven't been the only one with similar oddities since we aired that show. Yeah. And there's something else that you guys need to probably spread or out and and think about like, um, stones, um, gemstones, uh, onyx is one of Saturn's a big stone. Yep. And I think I made a post. I don't know if you guys read that rant the other day, probably not, but I ranted on, um, how Onyx is not a good stone or wasn't previously for thousands of years until the Victorians got a hold of it. Um, basically. So anyway, I'm into that kind of stuff. I think right I, on. Yeah, I did read that. So. I thought that was pretty interesting how that goes through. Yeah, it's 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 a there's a big history and so like when you when you go to like get stuff like that you need to kind of be careful what you're doing and do more research than just what's on the internet. Yeah, we because you know there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of baggage that comes with things that you're not realizing is there. We are terrible when we are oh, I, we are terrible at that taking precautions. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I completely understand. I completely comprehend. So, um, but yeah, anyway, um, let's see. Are there any stories you'd like to hear? I'll share a story. Share one. Um, so let me tell you about, um, let me tell you about one of the fairy experiences I have. Let's go. So, um, I uh, I have an artistic bent because um, I make all sorts of crap all the time. And um, at some point, I got a, a burr where I needed to build a labyrinth uh, to do labyrinth walking. And so I built one in my front yard. And I took a lot of time, you know, laying it out just so, um, made it out of marble chips, um, it was practically glowed in the dark at night because of the marble. Um, and then I aligned it north to south and all that kind of neat stuff. And um, one night I had um, I invited one of my friends over who had experiences with such things. Um, and we're sitting in the labyrinth in the center kind of just talking. He wanted to teach me how to how to, you know walk it and do the meditations that you do when you walk that kind of stuff when you use it because i had no idea i just had the need to build one um and um we're sitting there and i'm facing to the south and he's facing to the north well to the north basically three feet beyond the labyrinth is um starts my patch of woods and um he kept looking over my shoulder and i uh finally i say you know, what are you doing? What are you seeing back there? He says, you have a fairy gate behind you. I'm like, what? He said, you have a fairy gate behind you. And I turn around and look, and about two or three feet inside the woods, there's this spot where three trees had fallen together to form a a triangle, you know, pyramid shape. And inside that pyramid shape, there was this golden glow that filled it up. And there was these little tiny bright sparky things flying around that looked like little people with wings. And they were just flying around inside that glow. And we must have watched it for five or ten minutes. uh, And then basically just turned around and you know, just continued on talking with our evening. And when we got up and left the labyrinth, of course, it wasn't there anymore, but that's my experience with the fairy gate. It's on my land. That is awesome. First off. It's pretty awesome. It makes me wonder because someone else witnessed it too. So it makes me wonder if, if you, 
if you building the labyrinth caught the eye of the fairies or if the fairies uh, influenced you to build the labyrinth see i i don't know um because that's not the only experience we've had here like um when i first moved in me and my wife we didn't realize that there was something strange about the property you know initially because you're not you're not they don't you don't have to disclose that kind of stuff here uh you know when in virginia so um but we would be standing at the back window washing dishes right and you would hear the sound of children laughing and playing walk out back there's there's no kids there's no kids at all nope i'd be out <laughs> you know yeah, yeah. so yeah. you know so us experiencing you know something strange here that was not the first thing so but yeah i, I have no idea what if that's the case whether of course it doesn't exist now i had to tear it down um when i got kids because i needed a place to to put up their swing set so did you, you know? happen to get any pictures of your labyrinth because i would love to see it i do and i'll um it's actually on my facebook page and i have an album if they're still um actually accessible because you know how facebook is sometimes they they'll delete yeah. stuff on you or archive it um but yeah i'll try to tag it and post it to the uh fan fan page that's so you can see awesome them. that's yes. awesome it is it's interesting that you have like these artistic outs and once you start doing them they're linked to different uh and maybe not necessarily paranormal but like metaphysical and folklore things like the labyrinth of the fairies and the the woodworking with holly to saturn and it, yeah it, it, it just kind of happens that way you know i'll just get a burr it's like you got to make this and i'm like all right i'll just you know get inspired to make it and i'll make it and you know half the time i won't do anything with it it'll just sit around and eventually someone will come you know like if i'm making some sort of tool or something that I didn't actually need, then it'll just sit on a shelf until someone eventually comes around and, you know, picks it up and it goes to a home that wants it. You know, that's awesome. But yeah, it's just that one, is, that's one, weird. Find that its it, way out. Eventually it finds its own, it finds its, own, it yeah, finds its that's, owner. That's awesome. Yeah. So. I like that. Yeah. That's awesome. So, so yeah, Kyle, if you ever come across any holly trees or, or stuff like that and you, you know, want to make some spare cash, cut me up some pieces and send them to me. There you go. Or, I, you know, keep me in mind. I think I've only come across them once. Yeah, they're very rare. Yeah, you know? I th and I think it was in somebody's yard. Yeah. <laughs> I think if I remember correctly, there's a bunch in this dude's yard that we had to take out a long time ago. But up until that point, I mean... Even now, I haven't. I think that's the only time I've encountered them, as far as I'm aware. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me. Is it, um, yeah, they're 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 really. I was going to ask: is it is it more common in Virginia than it is than it might be out here in the Midwest? Um, in certain areas, like um, <sighs> so, I live in the mountains, um, in uh, near Winchester which is in the northern part of the state. Um, but where I was from was um, Chesapeake, which is um, right beside Virginia Beach. And it seems to be more common in the woods around there than it is up here. Um, I don't know why. That's just, just where it seems, you know, that's what I've noticed. Yeah, there, um, there are a lot of trees that are kind of regional. Yeah, I think it might just be the sandy soil. It may prefer, you know, sandy soil compared with what I've got is shale. Right. You know, so. Yeah, I forever, then, I forever just think of the holly bush because like, I have those around the house. The yeah, holly bushes. and no, they don't grow. Well, they grow really slow and eventually they'll, they'll get pretty big if you don't do anything to them. Yeah. But, but, um, we had um there was a historic site 
um, in Fairfax County, um, and they had one, must have been four feet in diameter. Um, I don't know how tall it was. And when I was working as um, a blacksmith at one of the other historic sites, we we tried to get them to cut it up uh, into useful boards. But by the time we reached them, they had already felled it and lobbed it into, you know, just firewood, oh, essentially. Right. Which, Damn. Which, which was unfortunate because on, on the historic site that I worked at, we always um, – we always had a guy come out with um, one of the portable bandsaw lumber mills and uh, cut it cut it all up because I worked at a um, at a grist mill and we were forever, you know, drying the wood and use it to repair the grist mill and do demonstrations and things like that. So, but anyway, yeah, it's it's unfortunate when you can't when trees like that just get cut up into firewood without. Yeah, it happens a lot, though. So, sorry, this stuff's not paranormal. Uh, no, we're yeah, good. We're, good. we're it's all ties in. Saturn wanted us to talk about it. Right, exactly. <laughs> that was that was awesome. But um, that's all I got for you. I guess I'll get off the phone. Let other folks uh, talk to you. Right yeah, on, thanks brother. for calling in. Have a good one. Stay yeah, weird. Bye. Bye. Let me find. I pulled up uh, Saturn and the Holly uh, crossover here. Just according to the old Googler, Holly was pop was a popular Saturnalia gift among the Romans, celebrating the winter solstice, honoring their god, who later brought Holly to England, where it was considered sacred. Christians later adapted the legends during many people or during many periods of history, it was called the holy tree instead of the holly tree. Very interesting. So Eric said the whole thing with Saturnella and Christmas made him question everything. Yeah, the religions are constantly really consuming one another. And like we talked about, wasn't that a a big Roman trope? Like they did that quite frequently. Wasn't that what we read, or you told me, or something to that effect? That the Romans were pretty normal. Oh yeah, they had, a, for... they had a specific name for it, but I can't remember right off the rip. Yeah, I'm just essentially, it means just consuming other religions. Yeah, and it just kind of fell that. Whatever's popular at the time kind of takes the front seat. It is it is weird to look back and see that to see it just doesn't make sense to to, to certain degrees how you would conquer somebody and then take their stuff and adapt it. I'm sure there's some thought out reason that I'm not seeing, but it just doesn't make sense to me. Well, you would you would feel like you as the conqueror would be the one to make the rules, not adapt yourselves to their it's rules. It's probably easier since you already have like a whole bunch of people kind of devoted, I guess, for lack of a better term, toward this one central thought process. If you can just wrap it in a new nice little package and send it out, it's probably well easier than having to build from the ground up. Just revamp the story a little bit, change the names of the players a little bit, like repackage in a video game, just send it down the line. I could see that. Twins, come on. You're smarter than that. I don't believe they actually did burn the library. And if they did, the library was most likely empty before the knowledge was destroyed. I got lost in the chat. Uh, life-size rabbits. Burning at the library. But all the good stuff was taken out, Twiz. It just wasn't made uh, as easily consumable to the public.
to the Vatican. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think, uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I think a lot of the good information was taken out of there. Yeah, they're not gonna, they're not gonna, gonna share the good stuff with Johnny Q Public. No, no way. That's why, like, even you see it in just ads anymore. Like, and that's what sucks. I mean, I get it. Everybody's got to have their thing, right? But it sucks. Like, if you're trying trying to do anything, uh, eat healthy, work out more efficiently. There's tons, of, like, almost the snake oil salesman. There's tons of them out there. Like, no, Kyle, this is what you want to do, man. You're trying to get your, uh, your, um, can't think of it, uh, metabolism up, man. You don't, you don't got to do this. You just spray stuff on your feet at night. Okay. You spray this oil on there. Your metabolism is going to go through the roof, son. You're going to have However, greasy feet. I need, yeah, I need twenty ninety nine a month to reveal this knowledge to you. And you're like, oh, of course you do. Of course you do. It can never just be, hey, this is ancient knowledge that everyone should know because it is healthy for you. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Oh, no. You're going to pay for that. All right. We got a phone call. Hey, welcome to the Yo. night shift. What's going on? Hey. <laughs> good day, good day. How's it going? Good. How are you? Look, not too bad, not too bad at all. I thought I'd better call in because uh, might be my last chance to call in for a little bit, actually. So, Why is that? You going back to work? Yeah, well, I mean, the first thing was um, the whole, uh, what I call it, daylight savings change. Because usually I could wrap up work and get home just, like, I could listen to you guys at work and then get home just in time to jump on. And that whole hour's kind of, like, been eaten now, so. Womp, womp. Well, yeah, a little bit harder to jump on, but uh, also a few other changes in life, which uh, hopefully mean I will be able to chat to you more in the future and do my own podcast and all that nonsense. So, hey. yeah, yeah, what's that space? Uh, yeah, there's a lot going on, but basically, yeah, look, daylight savings knocked me it's right out of the park. But, uh, yeah. Oh, man, killer. Like, come on, what's going on? But um, no, 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 I was just going to call it because, as I said, kind of have to. I feel like I have to. Come on. Of course well, you do. Absolutely love you guys. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's it. Look, I don't, I don't know if I love you as, some, uh, as much as some people in the chat. Uh, Johnny, I, I, I think he loves you more than I do. <laughs> yeah, I saw uh, that. Look, Probably slightly so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, look, I'm really into you guys, but there's, there's another level which uh, you, you've not got to reach yet. i got to be honest. So you mean honest. there's a yeah. chance. You said yet. <laughs> oh, look. There's always a chance. Always a chance. I hope with all the wiggling, he's careful as he's installing the dishwasher, because that could, it could end badly. I'll tell you what, that would be. Oh, so it's nothing worse than that. That big heavy door just clomped. Yeah. Yep. No, I'm not down with that. Not down with that. It'd be a crazy haunting though. The haunted dishwasher with the ghost PT just coming out at night. That'd be. That's terrifying. Something you don't want. The ghost of PT's past. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh god, it's already in the gutter. I apologize so hardcore. Um Yeah, yeah, no look, uh, uh so I guess a few things. Yeah, I've got today off because it's the public holiday over here. I don't need to bore you with that, but it's public holiday, so that's the only reason I got in early. Um, but once that's done and everything else, yeah. Uh, Steve does have a list, and it's in your email somewhere, of all the creepy, crazy shit that happened in my old house. And I know you've lost the list. I know it's buried now, but um, just so you know, I am starting to run out of the weird shit that happened, which is a bit of a sad one. Um, but here's one. And I don't want anybody in chat saying, oh, yeah, I recognize this critter. I know what this crypto thing is. Because if anyone else has had this experience, I'm just going to get up and go. Because um, I've never heard of it. But anyway, long story really short, I was about 20, 21, about that year. I, I know it's about that age. And still living in this house with my parents. I didn't move out to really late because I'm one of those sellers. And, um, yeah, so lying on my side, I'm asleep, I wake up, and right in front of me, like a foot away from my face, is this really short, and I can tell you a female creature, um, a really short, like 
two foot tall or something. Like her head is pretty much just like at the bed. And you know when you startle a creature like a deer or a possum or whatever, and you just startle, it just stops and looks at you. Like it just doesn't move, freezes. It's looking at you, but it's not moving, and it hopes that if it doesn't move, you won't see it. It was that kind of thing because it wasn't quite human, and and the description is just going to get weirder and weirder from here. Like the eyes, I only see one eye because the eyes are kind of on the side of its head, um, like a, like a prey creature, like you know, like again, like a deer, so or a possum. So the eyes weren't at the front. They're on the side of, of her head, although she was human-esque, if that makes sense. And um, But what was worse is I had two overwhelming feelings. The first one was just this overwhelming feeling of really, really old. Um, if you can imagine like a, a creature that's immortal but can't heal. So over time, you get things. You get paper cuts. You get things in the eye. You get scratches. If they don't heal but you keep living, it was kind of like that. Like the skin was just destroyed. It still looked like a a, a nice creature, if that makes sense, like like a good soul or whatever. But the yeah, the skin like you could just see straight through to like the, the mouth's closed, so you can see like a hole straight through to where the teeth are, the gums. Like the skin is just stretched and ripped across his face, and it was so that was pretty bloody terrifying. And the other weird feeling I had was this overwhelming feeling of sadness. Like I didn't. I didn't feel like I was sad, but just that wash of secondhand sadness was just off the charts. And again, when we talk about this whole thing of paranormal apathy or whatever, my, my the way I dealt with this was to flap the blanket over my head and it's gone. Because I mean, I'm a 21-year-old dude, right? I mean, this is all right. I was like, oh, nope, blanket, gone. And um, I'm just under the blanket overwhelming sadness for a few seconds and then I thought no what's going on flap the blanket back and yeah it's gone and I've instantly stood up I've instantly looked around the corner down the hallway towards where ghost dad walks to the dunny so it's that hallway looking nothing gone not in my room not in the hallway um just gone and uh it's the only time I ever saw it but yeah when I just first woke up it was as real as shit like it was just there i don't think i've ever had any vision or anything just that solid um bit of a scary one for me but yeah no idea what it was it was human-esque it was definitely human-esque it definitely had skin so not so much like fur or anything else but in terms of its facial structure and its head animalistic and obviously like two foot tall so really really short in terms of what you'd usually expect to be beside your bed the first thing of the morning um i mean I, I, I like the idea that it could have been a wallaby, but no, no, that was not a wallaby. It's, I mean, at best, it was a shaved wombat on its hind leg, at best. But uh, no, <laughs> it was a nothing. It was it was nothing I've ever seen, and nothing I've ever seen again, thank, thank the Lord, because, uh, yeah, that was heavy. That was bloody heavy. It sounds... I don't know what it is. Weird, first off. Uh, I Yeah. I expected yeah. nothing less, coming from Australia. So... That tracks. Um, it's true. weird that it was. It's it's strange to me when we hear these creatures and these entities when they're seen that they're almost afraid to be seen by by humans. It really makes you wonder, like where where we're at on the predator prey list of the paranormal. Yeah, because we lock them yeah. up and experiment, or shoot them if you're in Hopkins, Hopkinsville. Yeah, it's also good to know that the old pull the cover over your head trick still works. <laughs> Yep. Definitely makes things disappear. <laughs> Straight away. Just, oops, it's <laughs> and then it almost sounds like a damn zombie, a phase zombie, not deer. Mm, Combo yeah. pack. Yeah, well and truly alive, but physically destroyed. It would be yeah. awful. It's weird. Very weird. I definitely get like little fey vibes, but. I've never quite heard that description and it would probably leave me feeling when well, you said for you, it left you with this like, overwhelming feeling of sadness, which sucks. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I would take fear any day over that. I think like if you, if you wake up and there's something scary, okay, there's something scary. We all know fear. Fear is a good reaction. Sad. Wake up and see some half dead wombat woman and I get depressed. That's not a good start. It's really not. It's really not. No. I'm not up for that at all. So I don't know what the hell that was, but Jesus. Yeah, I'm glad it was just once. And again, like as I said, my parents, it's 
also saw a lot of what was going on in that house and they, they never had anything like that. So that was a, that was a one-off one-off. It is strange. Yeah, I don't. And feeling sad just sucks. Nobody wants to feel sad. Yeah. No, no. I mean, admittedly, that was probably the last time I felt sad, I think, and that was about 18 years ago. So we're doing well. That's good. Well. That's good. You seem yeah. like you are genuinely happy 99 Especially for living in a time. country where everything wants to kill you. Yeah. This is true. Yeah, you know, you make <laughs> friends with them. They're all good. I, I, I believe that you, of all people, yeah. could do that. Yeah, I have a strange relationship with critters. I've already saved a pond full of tadpoles this week because they weren't where they were supposed to be and pushed a bandicoot off the road. Um, so that was, yeah. Yeah, critters and me, we, we get along. Looking at you, just out there doing the, the right thing. The yeah. fact that he yeah. got to deal with a bandicoot is awesome. <laughs> I got to look up. I, I, I nearly ran over it. I was in the work truck driving down the road and it was it, like, my tires went either side of it. It was just, again, in the middle of the road, frozen like a zombie wombat woman, but significantly cuter. And uh, I thought, Jesus, fuck. And so I pulled, quickly pulled over, ran back with my jacket and just slapping this thing, get off the road, dickhead. And, um, but it, it, it moved, thankfully. But yeah, it's a cute well, I had to look it up. The fact, That's- for some reason in my brain, yeah. bandicoots weren't a real thing, but they definitely are. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. yeah. That's what I was thinking. Bandicoot. Yeah, I've rescued yeah. Crash Bandicoot. <laughs> hey, it's a, that's pretty cool. The franchise has been saved. It's like that's an elephant cool. rat, rabbit, a bandicoot. Yeah, oh, it's weird. It's it's it's, it's cute, but uh, a yeah, bandicoot. All they do is dig up your lawn. Yeah, a bandicoot. There we go. You've got it. We've renamed it. We've renamed it. Yeah, all they do is dig up your lawn and stand in the middle of the road. I I'm not sure what their existence is for, but hey, I'm still, I'm still it's simple. There. It's a simple one. Standing Very in, simple. standing in the road, digging up yards. That's like possums in the life. Midwest. All they do is eat garbage and get ran over. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> oh, that's all right. I know some people yeah, like that. Same here. Shout out Granite that City. <laughs> Hey, but at least possibly eat ticks, so we can get behind that. Yeah, there's there's, there's there's some there's some method to the madness. Yeah, nobody likes some, ticks. Some redeeming feature. No, no, ticks suck. Yeah, and we definitely have a lot of those too. Probably, the, you know, when you were saying everything over here is trying to scare us, uh, trying to kill us, whatever. That's probably the worst one. I don't mind a snake or a crocodile or a cassowary coming at you. At least you can see it for the most part. True. But you're just walking around minding your own business, and then something sucks your sucks your blood out, and you're paralyzed. Nah, that's I'm not down with that. Yeah, and they'll swarm you too, <laughs> little, little pricks. Mm. Yep, they'll get yeah, you. The no. I've walked yeah. I've walked yep. through a nest of them, and it's gross. <laughs> no, thanks. It's disgusting. That, that's, that's an experience you can keep to yourself. I'm not doing that. Oh yeah, it mentally scarred me. It <laughs> fucked me up for a while. <laughs> just uh, a little bitty. Um, seed with like sesame seed ones the itty bitty ones oh, I, I thought it was wood i thought it was wood chips on my socks and they started moving and i'm like oh shit these are not these are not wood chips and i get down there and they are all over my legs and i'm like this is disgusting that's why i'm only going dog man hunting when it's negative 40 yeah mm-hmm. Yeah, negative forty. Nothing, nothing else wriggling around. Everything's dead in the no, forest except no. the dog man. No. It's true. Or the wind. Yeah, but if negative forty doesn't kill the dog man, we're in trouble. True. True. Oh, true. 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 <laughs> words are never spoken. <laughs> oh boy. But yeah, no, I don't know. Life's going to have a few changes for me. I'm, I'm not going to bore you, bore you with those updates. But again, it's all positive. So yay. Good. Um, but it could be a month or two before you hear from me, which sucks a little bit, but I'll be around. Oh, and also I'm going to throw a quick reminder out there. Guys, check the Patreon. I just realized I wasn't a member because the whole change thing. Because again, I'm lazy. So yeah. Hey, we're all lazy to some degree. Because <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, I listen to you guys while I'm driving. And so I'm not going to be, I'm not doing Patreon while I'm driving. And I was like, oh, I'm going to do that when I get home. And then I get home and forget. No. And uh, I had forgotten. 
yeah, forgotten for a little bit too long. So I thought, no, no, I better sign up for that. Well, yeah. it's understandable and appreciated, my for friend. Sure. Yeah, yeah. So everyone, everyone make sure you've done that. And I do love you guys, not as much to get my PP stuck <laughs> in the dishwasher, but pretty, pretty heavily. <laughs> Well, yeah, we, love you too, we, but, we appreciate it. Even if it goes, even if it gets to that point, we're still here and appreciative. Just be safe. We when don't you're judge. Doing it. It's all content. Yeah, it's all yeah. content, right? Hundred <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> percent. Oh, shit. Right, have an amazing one though, and uh, I'll let someone else jump on. But no, nah, you guys are the best. We appreciate okay. you. Right on, man. We appreciate. Stay safe, my friend. Have a good one. Later. Bye. Oh, Ah, my friends from Australia never disappoint. Yeah, much love, brother. Yeah, it's weird that the entity, like his first reaction for the entity was like empathy. You know, he felt bad for it. He felt sorry for it, which is like. Yeah. Maybe he should keep like um, those really good club, the clubhouse club, club crackers by the foot of his bed maybe he was just a little hungry i feel like if if you just gave him one of those delicious crackers that that the little thing probably, probably would have been a good bandicoots mood. off the highway too that's true so you got a yeah. two for one right there yeah it's it's that's it's weird that they have the because you hear that on occasion that it'll they'll spark other emotions like twiz was saying other emotions than like curiosity and fear they'll spark sad emotions and stuff it's weird that they have that effect on us just out of just out of just sight you know just seeing one and you immediately start feeling a certain kind of way it's almost like a it's it's like an emotional manipulation like which is a, a weird fact well, i don't like that i can't yeah i can't appreciate that you're definitely not getting my cracker if yeah. you're manipulating me yeah and him just talking about like never being able to die, but still having to take the damage is awful. Yeah, it, you're eventually you're just going to be a glop sitting yeah. there, not being able to move. Yeah, especially in Australia. Come on, something is going to eat your leg eventually. Probably a bandicoot. Yeah, yeah, or a crocodile. Whichever one comes first. It's. Yeah. I mean, I feel like that movie A Legged Freaks was based off of spiders in Australia. One hundred percent. Snakes on a plane, Australia. Yeah. See, Jurassic Park, that's, Australia. Yeah, exactly. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Jaws, the original. Australia. Yeah. 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 So you, when you really think Australia. Sharknado, uh, Australia. Velocipaster, Australia. Yeah. It all makes the sense. The fact now. that Jeff even has the ability to call in and hang out with us for a few minutes while having to fight off all of these creatures. It's impressive. I feel like it's like all the creatures the rest of the world didn't want. They just kind of like, oh, like this venomous ass snake. We'll just send it down there on the island and then it won't be able to yeah. get off. These big ass spiders will send it down there to the island and it won't come back. Yeah, I think that's what they did with the undesirable people for a long time. They sent them. It's a prison island, island, a prison country. Yeah, or animals. I think that's legitimately how it was but built. I right? Know. I don't even know if Australia is real. The only the only proof I have that Australia is real is that <laughs> Jeff calls in and says he's from Australia. Well, and to be fair, the the caller ID does pop we're, up. As we're not Australia. trusting tools of the government. Okay, so. <laughs> No, I retract that statement. However, it is it is slightly or, convincing. I'm not gonna and his accent, his accent's really good. Hey, if, if we're not fake. believing we put people on the moon, I'm not believing we put people on, on Australia. Yeah. Pretty similar. Uh, uh, I don't know. I think I, I would be more apt to believe Australia than the moon. I don't know. We've only got one person call in from Australia. We've got no people calling from the moon. So, 
Jeff said a prison island for the undesirables, and we're well, still here. You do here. have bandicoots who are like tiny little rat rabbits with elephant trunk noses. Why That's kind of cool. cool. I'm okay with that. Jeff. Especially since it's just simple. It's just a simple little thing. Leave him a cracker once in a while and he'll be fine. He'll figure it out or he won't. It's real. I know an Aussie here. Yeah, that's what they, that sounds like what uh, they, uh, a psyop would want you to think. True. Sleep rage. Australia is a psyop. Yeah, it's a New Zealand psyop. Is New Zealand real? That's like, that's New Zealand is like Australia light. So that's true. I actually knew a pilot from New Zealand. His name was Craig. That sounds kind of New Zealandy. Craig. Yeah. He was really, really fucking good at his job. Flying planes. Helicopters with big that's saws. Sound, that's what, that's what you have to have in Australia. If Australia was a real place, yeah. that's what you have to have to fight off all the wildlife. Yeah. Circular saw he helicopters. Ridiculous. Of course it's where they shot Lord of the Rings. Do you think there's going to be a giant orc war anywhere else than Australia or New Zealand? Also true. What happened to old Zealand? Good question, Bertie. Now you're asking the real questions. <laughs> I like Atlantis. <laughs> Australia, Atlantis, both smoke. start with the same letter. Both of them not real. Weird. Or we just figured out the real Atlantis. My brother-in-law is Australian. Your brother-in-law is a liar, Wade. Because it doesn't, it no, he's doesn't just a lie. exist. <laughs> he's just a lie. You don't really have a no, brother-in-law. He also is a psyop. Yeah. It's just a part of uh, Project Bluebeam. Whenever we go on the Hollow World Tour, I'm booking one in Australia. And we're just going to fly right by it because it doesn't exist. Dude, me too. That's why I brought him up. I don't know why I just started Dude, thinking about club the other night. You've you've been on, yeah, when we were recording. Oh, yeah. we did. We definitely did. That's fucking weird. Yeah, I forgot all are. about that. I was on a good snack once in a while, man. You just eat the club and feel good. And probably good cryptid bait. Yeah, Crash Bandicoot. That was one of the probably. first video games I played on actual real consoles outside of. The, my first PlayStation came with a Crash Bandicoot demo, and I was too, yeah. too I remember those poor days. to afford the games, so days. I played the demo. <laughs> yeah, One I level those over days. and over and over and over and over. Yeah. Definitely remember those days. Uh, see, even Jeff's questioning. There's every chance that if I go on a drive for long enough, Sydney's just a movie set in Arizona or some shit. Hmm? Wouldn't that be fucking weird? You drive, you go out of the uh, Australia movie set right directly onto the moon movie set. <laughs> and they man, some people claim Mars, the Mars stuff has been shot yeah. out there too. Like Mars if, pictures. if I had to picture Mars in my brain, Bro, I, got, I got everybody on dude, the club crackers right Jeff. now. Do they have club going. crackers in Australia? This is going to be the this is going to be the selling point. What if he says no? Then it confirms happened? that Australia is not real. That's what I was thinking. I bet the Australian government is trying to silence Jeff right now. <laughs> He's pretty quiet. They have Tim Tams. What the hell is that? Like a Tic Tac. That's what it sounds like. That sounds like a blatant Tim ripoff. Tams. Tic Tac. Oh, well, uh, no close. Can't crackers. confirm. They're out. Doesn't exist. I'm, I'm, I'm now in the camp that. Jeff, what the hell is, is a Tim real. Tam? A Tim Tam is a brand of chocolate biscuit introduced in the Australian by the Australian biscuit company Arnott's in 1964. It consists of. Hold on, I'm on the wiki. The Tim Tam wiki. Consists of two malted biscuits separated by a light, hard chocolate cream filling and coated in a thin layer of textured chocolate. Is that like no, an Oreo? Rectangle. 
Oh, that's weird. But it still gives me Oreo yeah, vibes. Why do you, why? Is it a cookie or is it a biscuit? Right. Because biscuits in America yeah. are not what you all are calling it. it. Jeff, is gonna, Jeff is gonna send us Tim Tams. Oh, all right. I mean, I'll eat it. And, and the PSYOP post office can postmark it from Australia, but that doesn't mean I'm gonna believe it. Yeah. It definitely sounds yeah, it's a cookie. like a Oreo. It's legit a cookie. It's, I mean, it's chocolate and cookie. So, Tim Tams. Well, then it's oh, get a- this. Get this. Pepperidge Farm, a sister company of Arnott's, began importing Tim Tam to the United States in 2008. Tim Tams are still, this is from the wiki, quote, made in Australia, end quote. Packaging in the U.S. bears the slogan, Australia's favorite cookie. Cookie being the American word for biscuit. What do you guys call biscuits? We're learning as a we're learning as a whole here. I don't have chicken salt. Tim Tams in a tiny jar of Vegemite, like all the way from rural Arizona. Chicken and biscuits, chicken biscuits, uh, whatever you want to call them. They don't have chicken salt. What's chicken salt? A and B, how do you not have Jeff? What do you call a biscuit? Like a like biscuits and gravy? Like what do you call a yeah, biscuit? Like if you call a cookie a biscuit, bro, you fuck this up. Australia, they don't have our kinds of biscuits. Not. Oh, well, that's a mark against you because you're missing out on that. Yeah. So what do you eat with gravy? They don't have gravy. If you guys don't have gravy, Jeff, we're going to be sending you some gravy. By the time it gets over there to the non-existent uh, prison island, it probably won't be editable, but take our word for it. Yeah, business and gravy are what's up, bro. I'll tell you right now what you do. Here's what you do. This is the move. Everybody, I'm going to teach you the move, all right? Get yourself a big old plate of biscuits and gravy. And then on a separate plate, you get shredded hash browns that are cooked pretty good. You know, it's got a little bit of crunch to it. And you get a couple eggs over easy. Well, you eat the eggs over easy first. Then you, then as you scoop the hash browns into the biscuits and gravy, you have to go through the egg yolk. So it all mixes. You flop that on there and then you top it off with some Tabasco sauce. That's the move. Jeff looks That's up biscuits and gravy. Is that a scone and mayonnaise? Hundred percent proof. What the you fuck don't exist. You, you are Jeff, not real. Oh my god. We're gonna have to have an intervention. The... Scone and We're mayonnaise. We're gonna have to have an intervention. What the fuck? Chicken salt is like rotisserie chicken that you can sprinkle on anything. I suggest mashed. But I. I mean, I would. I'll fuck with that. Yeah, that's okay. you get good. you get a plus one Australia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This scone and mayonnaise. No, 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 dude, that's blasphemy. Biscuits and gravy are delicious. Does anywhere else have biscuits and gravy? Is that just an American thing? Because I mean, it feels like an American thing. Well, I feel like I hope it is at this point. Because I'll oh, eat all the biscuits yeah. and gravy. You can make homemade gravy easy, milk gravy. What do they call gravy yeah. over there? You don't have gravy over there? Apparently, they just have mayonnaise. That's not gravy. No. Yeah. we yeah, The Aussie cooking show, I think, would do well because we are just in awe over here at the fact that biscuits and gravy yeah. don't exist. Yeah. You guys need help. It's much worse than we thought. Like the, everything there wants to kill you. That sucks at, to a certain extent, but you can deal with that with weapons yeah. and stuff you can handle. But the fact that there is no biscuits and gravy, our gravy is brown. Okay. We do have brown gravy here. Oh, we have white. Yeah, gravy. yeah we got options. Not though. the kind of gravy with yeah. the dishwasher guy doing a thing, but like milk gravy, flour, flour, milk. Yeah. Yeah. Peppered gravy, sausage gravy, bacon gravy. 
Oh yeah. That's a hundred percent right, Gilbert. Jeff, if you we're giving you a fair warning, if you eat biscuits and gravy, you will instantly gain fifty pounds and start your Australian accent will disappear. You will start talking like you're from the Midwest. I mean, what's wrong no, with that? I didn't say it was a bad thing. Just a warning. Because I mean, the Australian accent's kind of cool. Yeah, that's true. Biscuits and gravy, just wet and dry flour. Oh, come on. That's blasphemy. Blasphemy. You must have really shitty biscuits and gravy then. Cook sausage, add flour and milk, stir till thick. Yeah. Yeah, you just, and then you put it on a biscuit, which apparently is a scone. Here, scones are like sweet. Right? They got like blueberries in them and shit like that. A biscuit is savory. And definitely yeah. not a cookie. What is a cookie over there? If a cookie's a biscuit and biscuits are scone, what is a cookie? Do you have does a cookie represent anything over there? Holy shit, is the first time you've ever heard I told you because you don't exist. This is true. This is true. This is a moment of enlightenment, everyone in the chat. Right there. We have just enlightened our friend Jeff to a whole new world. You're going to have to come to the States. I don't know. Have you been to the States? Come come on over. I think Twiz is calling. We'll let it. We'll, we'll let it. We'll let it fly. Hey, welcome to the night shift. I get kicked out of Australia on. for trying to figure out what the fuck a biscuit is. Hey, Twiz. Yeah. <laughs> Bro. You you want to know what these New Zealand fake psyop people eat for breakfast? Mayonnaise. You know what ve- you know what veggie mine is. I'm not trying it. Oh. Is that like veggie straws? Uh, uh, bro, check this out. Okay, so I know you know what Nutella is. You've probably seen it, but you might not have never oh, had yeah. it. You know what Nutella is? That hazelnut mm-hmm. spread. Yeah. Well, well, imagine squeezing all the juice out of a hazelnut spread and putting that on toast. That's what these goofballs <laughs> eat for breakfast, and they want to talk shit about our biscuits and gravy. So it's like it's like mud and bread, mud bro. Bread. <laughs> yeah, look it up. Look it up and try to debate me. I dare Jeff to try to debate me about what Vegemite is. It's not. It doesn't even have. A recipe. It's just like random oils and spices. Oh, Jeff agrees. He says that stuff sucks. It is mud bread. Can't confirm. Never have never not had yeah. Vegemite in the cupboard. I don't trust anybody. I don't trust anybody who has Dude, had like I'm saying. Veg- Vegemite just sounds gross. Vegemite. Oh, it is. It sounds it is. like it sounds like a parasite that lives on a <laughs> carrot. There's a, uh, I know, I know there's videos on YouTube of like British kids. Bertie just talked about it in the chat. <laughs> just getting their minds blown. Yeah. Trying American food and they give them a plate of biscuits and gravy. And every one of them says it looks like puke and they don't want to eat it. Yeah, but it's all they eat it. Till they eat it. Yeah. And then their faces go red and say, this is the greatest thing I've ever had in my life. Yeah. What is this? Yeah. But yeah, dude, I don't trust anybody who has any biscuits and gravy. That's what I'm saying. That's like a, I mean, that's just. That's America like, what doesn't you get a lot of things right, but I'm fighting for biscuits and gravy over Vegemite. <laughs> I'm with you. I will, I will stand on that hill and I will gladly die on that hill. I remember when I was a kid, parties used to have 99 cents, all you could eat biscuits and gravy on Fuck Sundays. Yeah, dog. And it was the only reason we went to Hardee's. Because at the time, in the 80s, it wasn't the Hardee's that it is now. You know, the revamp Hardee's that's good all of a sudden. I don't know if you guys have those in Illinois. Yeah. Do you have Hardee's? Or yeah, do you have yeah. The- we got Hardee's. I know... I know it's called something different the further west out you go. So that's what I was asking. Like, it's called something different. Yeah, Carl's. Carl's, Carl's we Carl's still got Hardy's out here, though. Here you go. Yeah. But, yeah. 
back when I was growing up, Hardy's food was disgusting, except the biscuits and gravy. And that was fire. And like I said, every Sunday, 99 cents, it would be fat in there. Because oh, everybody yeah. would show up. Hell and yeah. it would be empty the rest of the week. Oh, yeah. And then somewhere, I don't know, like in the late 2000s, 2010, I think they revamped. And now Hardee's is good again. Bro, yeah. Hardee's, like, whether you want to admit it or not, Hardee's has one of the best bacon, egg, and cheese biscuits in the in the game right now. And they have for a hot minute. The only reason why I disagree with you can't. It's because it's a fold, dude. It's a folded egg. I like. Oh uh, yeah, like that, that does suck. That does suck. I will agree with that. That's the only thing yeah. that I'll disagree with about. I, I if feel it that. had a flat egg on it, dude, it'd be the fire, most fire breakfast sandwich. Yeah, hands I, I, down, I fuck without with that. question. I fuck with that. I do. I do. But yeah, I that's why that. you got to go to the little, the little grease spot diners. Oh for yeah, definitely. Sandwiches. Hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But I digress. We're not talking about conspiracies or or cryptids. We're talking about technically reference, Australia so. not existing oh, is yeah. a pretty. I just wanted to say pretty big conspiracy. True. We, we did start with that, but yeah. I just wanted to defend breakfast and or biscuits and gravy honor for a little bit. So I'll holler. Right on. Stay safe. Right on, brother. Yep. Later, guys. Later. I was gonna bring it up, Jeff. I was gonna bring it up. How do you feel about peanut butter and jelly? There it is. For decades as to what peanut butter and jelly was until I worked out what you guys call jelly isn't what we call jelly. Well, what is what is jelly well, to you? Be like Vaseline. Don't eat Vaseline on toast. Yeah, that'd be a bad idea. Everything. Hardy's does do biscuits well hardy's biscuits go hard yeah they got it on lock i still drive on the weekends 20 minutes to go get hardy's biscuits and gravy bring it back home yeah dude for sure jeff you have a you there's a whole new world for you to explore you need to get off the island all right come over have some b and g's and then just go from there Australian army once lost a war. I to believe emus. that because every animal wants to kill every human. Oh, their jelly oh. is jello. I can see how that'd get confusing. No. Yeah. I mean, we yeah, have jam our, too. Okay. So in in America, we have jelly and actually, jam. I actually kind of prefer yeah. jam. Jam is just like smash yeah. fruit and sugar where jelly is smash yeah. fruit and sugar and gelatin jam is well better than jelly i'll die on that hill yeah i, I think I, yeah i definitely prefer jam as i've gotten older textures are very weird to me like i ate a deviled egg for the first time the other day wasn't feeling oh, it. Remember when we went to Gatlinburg and I ate a fried and deviled egg? We were like chewing yes, on Yes, I do remember ball. that. Yeah, that's, dude, that's kind of how I feel like eating the deviled egg. I'm not, I can't do the texture. Flavor's okay. The texture is no, no good to me. Uh, yeah. Uh, did we ever get, did we ever come to the chat as to what, do you, do you guys call anything cookies in Australia? Because I'm curious. We're all learning here. All right. I know we went off topic, but that's kind of what we do now. Here. Yeah. So we'll get, we'll get 25 people complain about the show whenever it drops. I mean, maybe, maybe we just maybe start, we a start a learning a channel. channel. Or we learn stuff. I mean, I'm good with the food channel. All it's going to be is us talking yeah. fat stuff. So we need to know what a, what, what you, what do you call a cookie? No, like, is is there a food that you call a cookie in Australia? I mean, in Florida, it's an ounce of blood. Yeah. <laughs> Since stitches will take sell. Take Australia. Yeah, take yeah. that, Australia. Hopefully that's what they call a cookie. Yeah, sure. 
(laughs) (laughs) This is, yeah, we've went down the, this is a whole different rabbit hole. A cookie is a sweet single layer baked thing like a chocolate chip cookie. Okay. Those are cookies here too, but also pretty much cookies are a wide gamut. All right. It's a, it's a vast umbrella of baked sweet snacks. Yeah. Actually, I don't, I don't do much sweets anymore. I'm not a big sweets guy anymore. But I still love breakfast. Was, you never take that I'm away from me. I'm not a big me. breakfast guy. I will. I do. I love fuck breakfast. with biscuits and gravy, though. But biscuits and gravy is universal. You can eat that for lunch. You can eat that for dinner. You can eat that for oh, yeah. lunch. I think I feel like all breakfast is universal. You could eat it anytime. Quiz, of day because and it's still good. Australia isn't real, and they haven't they haven't realized it yet. We learn about it from being outside of it. None of that. So have you had, did you try peanut butter and jam? Because I said, hey, that's not bad. <laughs> Sausage, egg, cheese, repeat. That might be a hollow sky t-shirt. <laughs> you, you, you could put sausage, egg, and cheese on just about We anything. can make We can make a I mean, B&G shirt. It says, just has Bigfoot and Goat Man crossed out and we'll put biscuits and gravy. Yes. Sells itself with that every time, every time. <laughs> we, everybody, everybody's Dude, in Nate's, it. Nate's on it. Nate's on it. Breakfast is the best, man. Peanut butter and jam is great. Yeah. Oh, bro, I love breakfast burritos. Breakfast, everything, man. Yeah, breakfast burritos do it too. You're in NorCal. Go to Mel's Drive-In and get the hangover breakfast. Two large biscuits, two eggs, two large sausage patty, two <laughs> bacon all smothered in sausage gravy. Uh, yeah. Hell yeah, yeah. yeah. I, think, I think that's money, Jeff. We'll be your uh, consultants, and it'll just be you trying American food. I think it'll. I think the demographic will find you. Except I that agree. you're from Australia and it doesn't exist. Yeah, it's fake. Because now we are to that point. I am I'm officially in Steve's camp. Australia's fake. Yeah. It's not real. Thirty eight years and you didn't know what biscuits and gravy was. You mm-hmm. have been living a lie. A lie. Yeah. It's a lie. <laughs> Great Falls, man, Montana, Montana. Wow. What is up? What is up? Ghost and toast. That's a fucking that solid is. name. People are, people are like going to think it. it's boozy though. The ghost and toast. No, 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 no. Well, you just have a logo of like a ghost eating a piece or a of piece toast. of toast. That is a ghost. Ah, I like that too. I like that too. I thought about getting into making my own bread. We do sometimes. That'd be kind of cool. It's yeah, good. I like that. What will Hollow Sky drink from there? I'm not drinking anything from Australia. If you guys milk out uh, fucking Nutella and put it on your bread. Yeah. yeah. Who does that? Who the fuck like sucks? Like, I feel like, the, like you do that to bananas. You dehydrate <laughs> them and then eat them like candy. He don't do that to fucking chocolate. <laughs> Let me just suck all the moisture out of this chocolate and make it dirt. And you can put it on a piece of bread. Is it the UK that puts like baked beans on toast? They probably have to add water. They to talk that shit, shit about us for putting gravy on biscuits. Yeah, come on. <laughs> put baked I think, it, beans I think on they toast. do. Who does that? Get out of here. That's just, this is, this is too much. <laughs> and then we're back to Vegemite. We do baked Damn. beans on toast too. Carabot. Oh my goodness. 
carrot bugs. Whoa. Ew. Oh, that's dope. I've been going ghost hunting up here with my wife. I'm Native American. I've seen some crazy stuff. We're gonna have to. We're gonna have to hear about it. The UK for has sure. baked beans for breakfast. No, I'm not even that big of a baked mm-hmm. bean fan. Not for breakfast. Me neither. Me neither. I do like white yeah. chicken chili though. That's my. That's now my I'm jam. curious as to what other things. I guess I'm just uncultured. Staying here in America, eating my peanut butter and jelly yeah. and my biscuits and gravy. Also why I'm fat. Yeah, it so, happens. But it's been a delicious journey. I mean, everything's a trade-off, yeah. right? Everything's a trade-off. That's just what that's what life is. I saw people that live or that work second shift and stuff give up 15 years that's of their life. That's why I'm going to night shift. On average. Let's That's on average. On top of the cancer plan. Yeah. It's going to be a double. Yeah, so you're looking, you're looking at least 30. Which I got to be close, right? <laughs> yeah. My pop's beans would make you walk to Tampa, Florida. for That's a long walk. Yeah, that's too long of a walk for me. Our supermarkets have several flavors of baked beans. Do you have a a preference for what goes on your toast? Is it like jelly flavored baked beans? Because that mm. sounds terrible. Sound <laughs> we have dr- we've drove this train off the tracks. Yeah, I I'm probably gonna get off here yeah. and go to we're, bed. We're just gonna shut her down now because. There's no salvaging no. this episode at this point. Mm-mm. No. No, we're about time. I got to get up and Me work. Too. And then it's going to be terrible. And find space day. Yeah. Yeah. Mine's yeah. in the ass tree. So. Day. Huh. Weird. At one hour, six minutes and 30 seconds on your night shift episode 64, there's a girl's voice. Hmm, let me note that real quick. Hold that thought. Interesting. Take a picture of that and go listen to it. Because maybe it is a ghost. All right, but that being said, thanks for hanging out with us. Thanks for giving us all your culinary tips and tricks from all over the world. Uh, Yeah, support all of our podcast friends. And, uh... Stay safe, stay weird, and uh, yeah, just biscuits and gravy. Just try it if you haven't, for the love. Say goodbye to your credit card rewards. Greedy corporate mega stores, led by Walmart and Target are pushing for a law in Congress to take away your hard-earned cash back and travel points to line their pockets. The Durbin Marshall credit card bill would enact harmful credit card routing mandates that would end credit card rewards as we know it. If you love your credit card rewards, tell your lawmakers, hands off my rewards. Tell them to oppose the Durbin Marshall credit card bill.